described in the Corrosion Control for Army Aircraft Manual. Corrosion repair consists of three basic steps. One, clean the area to remove moisture, corrosive agents, and foreign matter. Two, treat the area to remove pits, scratches, etc. Three, coat the exposed area to prevent future damage. Here is an example of detection and simple repair of corrosion on a magnesium gearbox housing. First, inspect the housings. This is normally done at the 10 hour or 14 day inspection and every time that maintenance is performed around the housings. Check the surface and flanged areas for nicks, scratches or debonding of the coating. Mark these areas with a grease pencil and record them in the aircraft logbook. Be sure to repair these areas as soon as possible. Prompt repair of these areas is extremely important to stopping the spread of corrosion. Do not carry a corrosion-related deficiency as a deferred maintenance item. Here's an example of a temporary fix that's had good results in the Navy. First, clean the area with an abrasive pad. Then, wash it with the appropriate dry cleaning solvent. When the area is thoroughly clean, spray it with corrosion control fluid. Remember, this is only a temporary fix. Coating is the only solution to long-term corrosion prevention. Proper repair of the coating must be made as soon as possible. For long-term repair, or rework of magnesium housings, follow the procedures in accordance to TM 43-0105, or its soon-to-be-released replacement. Clean any oil or grease from the damaged area using dry cleaning solvent. Let's begin with fine scratches. When they are no deeper than the paint, they may be blended smooth using a crocus cloth. The damaged area may be touched up with epoxy coating. For deeper damage, more has to be done. First, be sure that the nicks, gouges, and scratches do not exceed the limits called out in the TM. Remove the paint using a paint remover. Deeper scratches, pets, etc., may be blended out to the radius called out in the TM. This is done using aluminum oxide paper. When the area is clean, apply a chromic acid pickling treatment. Keep the surface wet with the coating solution until a greenish brown or brass colored yellow is obtained. Rinse the area with fresh water. Make sure that any pools of water that collect on the aircraft are removed. Then allow approximately two hours for the area to dry. The surface is now ready to be primed. Apply two coats of the epoxy primer called out in the TM. Also, be sure to follow all the safety and repair procedures called out in the TM. Note that when the primer is applied in high humidity, the primer may not adhere well to the surface. This might cause eventual debonding. When the primer dries, apply two coats of top coat. Again, follow the procedures called out in the TM. Avscom and Sikorsky have incorporated many changes to the gearboxes to reduce corrosion. One of these changes is the application of clear pup sprayed on the input module. Other changes include filling of voids to eliminate places where water can get trapped, surrounding fasteners with sealant, painting over seam caulking, and plating of fasteners with cadmium metal. 
Another area prone to corrosion is the spherical bearing. It's the exposed ball portion of the bearing that shows some surface corrosion. This surface corrosion takes the form of discoloration and eventual pitting. When corrosion forms, it's usually wiped away by the normal movements of the bearing. Because the bearing is lined with Teflon, lubrication or coating is not required. Do not lubricate or coat these bearings. This will actually damage the bearing. Corrosion may develop closer to the neck portion of the ball, the area not in contact with the Teflon. The corrosion here does not get wiped away by the normal movements of the bearing. During inspection, clean off the ball with a scouring pad. Then check the ball for pits and count the number found. Compare your findings with the accept reject criteria found in the manual. At the 30 hour special inspection, use the plastic feeler gauge to measure bearing wear. Check this against acceptable wear criteria found in the manual. These assemblies must be replaced when the gap between the liner and the ball exceeds the allowable clearance. The uniball is next. It's the bearing portion of the swashplate assembly located at the base of the main rotor shaft. It allows the fixed swashplate to tilt about the rotor shaft. Uniball components are made of aluminum and plated with chrome. Sometimes moisture gets under the chrome plating through a pit. This enables the galvanic effect to corrode the aluminum. When the aluminum corrodes, it causes the chrome plating to blister, crack, and flake off. Uniballs are now being made with a copper layer below the chrome. Copper doesn't react as much with the chrome. Therefore, it holds the chrome plate better than aluminum. If corrosion, blistering, cracking, or flaking is found in the bearing area during your inspection, check it against the criteria called out in the TM. Replace as required. As with spherical bearings, do not coat, lubricate, or use solvents to clean. For routine maintenance, wash frequently with fresh water. Electrical connectors are also prone to corrosion, especially the de-icing kit connectors located on the rotor head. These connectors are made of aluminum and coated with nickel to reduce corrosion. When the plating on the back shell is nicked or scratched, the aluminum is exposed and may corrode. Erosion caused by blowing debris can damage the plating and expose the aluminum. This exposure enables corrosion to take place when corrosive agents and moisture are present. This eventually leads to the failure of the connector. To prevent corrosion from occurring on the electrical connector, apply CPC compound inside and outside the connector. Note that there are two different types of compounds, one for the inside of the connector and one for the outside. When a connector corrodes beyond allowable limits, it must be replaced. It's much easier to use CPC to prevent corrosion than to spend time replacing the wire harness. You have just seen some of the ways corrosion can damage Blackhawk parts if left unprotected. You must provide that protection. You are the front line in the battle against corrosion. Prevention, early detection, and quick repairs are the keys to winning the corrosion battle. Your help is also needed to identify other problem areas. Take a minute to fill out Form 2028 or Standard Form 368 to document those conditions so we may include them in our corrosion prevention and control program. Again, I say you are the front line in the battle against corrosion, a battle that can only be won by you.